Welcome to The Green Room. I'm Israel Hyman, and today I'm going to give you a guided tour of The Green Room, which is the browser-based composition tool at greenlayers.com. It's extremely useful because it lets you try out your favorite alpha clips from the Green Layers catalog before you actually buy them. I'll show you what I mean. Using the tools inside of the Green Room, you can easily create full scenes with real characters selected from the GreenLayers.com catalog. It allows you to test the video clips before you purchase them. For example, if I needed a scene of people arguing, I could easily composite something like this that is really made from four different character clips, as you can see here, as I make them appear and disappear. Maybe you're planning a banner ad and you want to see if a certain video clip might get your audience's attention the way you would want it to. The Green Room makes that possible before you commit any money to your project. To do any of these things, we first need to know how the Green Room works. Let's go ahead and get started by looking at these different buttons here along the left side of the screen. This first one is called New Workspace. If I click on this, then I create a brand new workspace for me to work in. However, I don't really want to do that right now because I already have all these other items already here. So I'm just going to leave this button alone for now. This next button is called Open Saved Workspace. If I click on this, then I can see a list of the other projects and workspaces I've saved previously. I've worked on these before now, and I can bring them up if I want to reopen them again. I'm not going to do that right now either, though. This third button is called Save Workspace. If I click on this button, then I can save any workspaces I create online, and it retains the information for me so I can come back and bring it up again later at some point. These four tools right here are for manipulating the objects that are inside the workspace. For example, this first one is called Move Tool. If I click on it, then what that does is give me the ability to move objects around that are inside my workspace. I'm going to go ahead and put this one back right where I found it. This next button here is called Rotate Tool. If I click on it, then my pointer turns into this little symbol that lets me know that if I click and drag on an object, I can rotate that object. I'm going to go ahead and put this one back though because I don't need to rotate it right now. This button right here is called Scale Tool. If I click on it, then once again if I click and drag, I can change the size or the scale of the object that's inside my workspace. I'm going to put this one back where I found it once again. This final tool right here is called Reflect Layer. If I click on it, then all it does is reflect the object back and forth, sort of reverses it as if it was a reflection in a mirror. Very useful, especially if you want to have a reflection of an object in your workspace. These buttons down here control playback of the animation. This first one is called Play All, the second one is Pause All, and this one is Rewind All. If I click on Play All, then what happens is the animation up here starts moving. In fact, you can see there she is smiling and talking and moving her head. So that's what happens when I play all. I can also pause and rewind all. This last control here is called Hide Controls. If I click on it, then these windows over here are going to leave the screen. These are the controls over here. So if I click on Hide Controls, they shuffle off the screen to allow me more space in my workspace. If I was using bigger imagery or needed more room or needed to see more, I can simply click on Hide Controls to get the controls out of the way. Click on it again to bring them right back. There's a direct relationship between this window, the Layers window, and this window, the Layer Options window. The layers are up here. The layer options are down here. For example, if I click on layer 4, then the options for layer 4 appear here. If I click on layer 1, then the options for layer 1 appear here. If I click on background, then the layer options window disappears as you can see because the options associated with the background are basically this color chooser. I can have this sort of red-orange background, a yellow background. Just by clicking, I can change the background color. I'm going to click and go back to white because I like that one the best for this. Now, I'm going to go back and click on Layer 4 again. Now, Layer 4 is sort of a confusing name. What is Layer 4? Well, if I click on this toggle, this little eye here, you can see I can toggle Layer 4 on and off. And as you can see from the workspace, Layer 4 is actually the lady. So what I want to do is rename it. So the first option I have is I just have to make sure Layer 4 is selected. Then I can go down here and call it, I'll just call it uh, Lady. All right, and I tab to get out. Now I'm going to go to Layer 1 here. And layer one, if I toggle it off and on, you can see layer one is the actual banner ad itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and type banner ad and tab to get out. So now I have lady is layer one, 
this top layer is lady the second layer is banner ad so if I click on lady and then I toggle it you can see the lady disappears if I click on banner ad and toggle it you can see the banner ad disappears and of course the background layer is on the bottom now one of the nice things about the layers is that you can move them around for example if I wanted the banner ad to be on top I could just click and drag and make it so it superimposes over the lady now I don't want to really do that I'm just showing you as an example so I'm gonna click and drag the lady move it back up here again and boom the lady layer is on top and the banner ad is on bottom and the background is in the very back since I have the lady layer selected I'm gonna go ahead and take a few moments to adjust some of the options that you see down here this first one is called blend mode blend mode is a little too complex to go through in this tutorial but I will say that it has to do with how the layers interact with the layers beneath it for example I can set this layer on multiply blend mode and then it changes the way that it looks and there's many options to choose from but I'm gonna leave it on normal for now and let's go to the opacity Opacity refers to how transparent versus how opaque an item is. For example, if I slide this down, you can see that the lady turns more and more invisible, more and more transparent. If I slide it all the way up, she becomes more and more opaque. That's what the opacity slider does. Blur does probably what you think it would do. It controls how blurry the image is. And I'm going to, of course, leave it all the way down. I don't need it to be blurry right now. Reset transformations resets the layer back to the original form before you had added any transformations to it. Center to stage actually centers the image, brings it to the middle of the workspace if you want to have it there. Import from is something we're going to use here in a couple minutes, so I'm going to skip it for now. These controls control play, pause, and rewind of just this layer only. Okay, so these controls are very different from these controls over here. These controls cover the playback of all of the workspace. These controls control just the playback of the one individual layer. Now that I know how all of the tools work inside the green room, let's go ahead and create a new workspace here and start something from the beginning. All right, so I've got this fresh area to work in. The first thing I want to do is make sure layer one is selected. And I'm going to go down here to the import from area. We haven't really talked about import from yet in detail. What the green room allows you to do is either import from your computer, meaning that you can upload an image, either a JPEG or a PNG file, or I can import from the favorites selections as I was browsing through the greenlayers.com alpha clip catalog. For this one, I'm going to click on PC for now. I'm going to go ahead and say, yep, I want to erase anything that was on that layer. I'll click on unitedbankbanner.png. The nice thing about a PNG file, incidentally, is that it allows you to have areas of transparency. And in a moment here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So as this loads here, I'll just get ready to click on my move tool. I'll move this up to here and make it a little easier to see. To show you the transparent part of the image, I'm going to click on background and I'm going to change the background color to to sort of a green color here. You can see here that I've got a green background. The PNG file, however, has this white area as part of the file, the red and all of the text. And this green is actually not part of the PNG file. The PNG file has a transparent area that allows the green to show through. That's one of the really nice things about a PNG file is that it, if there's an area of transparency, whatever's behind it is going to show through. I'm going to go ahead and click on white to go back to the white background. Now I'm going to go back to layer one and I'm going to rename layer one to make it a little easier. I'm going to call it the banner add part, tab to get out. I'm going to make sure it's selected up here and I'm going to click on the plus sign to make another layer. This layer is going to be a video clip that I import from my favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the star and it'll bring up this list of all these different clips that I selected as I was browsing through the catalog. The one that I want is this handcuff one right here. I'm going to go ahead and import it. And you can see here, if I play it for you, I've got this really nice video clip of handcuffs. It's a little, nice little animation there. Okay, so I'll pause it, rewind, go back to the beginning. Use the move tool to move it over here. Now I'm going to use the scale tool to shrink it down. Maybe like that. Go back to the move tool again to get it in the right place. This is where I want it, right here. Okay, now the banner ad is on bottom right now, and the handcuffs, which I need to rename, I'll just call it handcuffs here, handcuffs, are on top. All right, what I want is the banner ad on top, so all I have to do to move it to so where it's on top is just basically click and drag, 
and boom, now it's on top. So if I play it, if I go back and play the whole animation, you can see what my final, final composition looks like. There you go, very nice. Go ahead and pause it, rewind back to the beginning. As you can see, the green room is a very simple but powerful tool. That's it for this introduction tutorial. Thank you for joining me.